I just passed 70 troy ounces of physical gold. Yes. Now what? Hey everyone, thanks for watching Yankee Stacking. You know, right before the recent roller coaster in Gold Spot, I bought an ounce of gold from my local coin shop dealer, Tim, and crossed a milestone in my gold stack. 70 ounces. I think all of it's here. But here, here's the itemized list. You can take a peek at it. 70 ounces is a lot. At the current spot price of 2025, it's over $143,000 in fiat currency. But I'm not done. I need more gold. And of course, silver too, but that's for a different video. But I'm not sure what to stack next. I've talked to Tim about it. He gave me his suggestions. Maybe you can make a suggestion in the comments below. Just make sure to hit the like button for this video before you do that. So yeah, more physical gold. I need it. I shouldn't have to tell you why. It's a hedge against what you and I know is coming, or at least I hope you know what's coming. I've done my very best for the past five plus years to tell you why I'm convinced a massive collapse in the US dollar is coming. I've told you how to stack the Yankee way, how I don't invest in gold and silver to build wealth, but to preserve my current buying power. I've also clued you into various ways to speculate in the future precious metals moonshot that I think is coming. So while I protect my wealth with physical gold and silver, I'm trying to increase it by leveraging a small amount in mining companies poised to make 10, uh, 20, even 30x my investments. Now, I have the distinct pleasure of interviewing Canada's most famous gold prospector, Sean Ryan. He has been called the Tin Shack Millionaire, and he has an absolutely fantastic story that I know you're going to enjoy hearing. He loves gold. He's bullish on it. And yet, this gold prospector has pivoted his attention to something that I need to know more about. And I think you need to know as well. Welcome, Sean. Thanks so much for joining me and for sponsoring this portion of my video. Nice to be here. I just reached a gold milestone, Sean. I passed 70 ounces of physical gold in my stack. Are, are, well, you, a, are you a gold stacker? Well, I'm a gold bug because I believe in gold. And I actually started it back in, in basically in the early, the late 19, or 1996 to 2002, when gold was 280 bucks an ounce, nobody cared about it. And now she's worth a fortune. So, so you got to think a long, like, you know, long term, and that's what gold's all about. So that's why I, I do love gold. I mentioned in my intro, you were dubbed the Tin Shack Millionaire. Uh, what was that life like back in those early days, living in a tin shack, prospecting for gold? Well, it, it was kind of a, the, the irony was I used to actually, before that, I was a commercial mushroom picker, like morels and basically pine mushrooms for the Japanese market. And we did that for about seven or eight years. But then we were kind of in and out of Dawson all the time because that's where we're picking in the spring. So when my lovely wife got pregnant, I said, well, we can't be a bunch of vagabonds moving up and down, packing up camp and all the time. So we lived right across from Bonanza Creek, where it was it was six to seven million ounces of plaster gold produced there historically. And but we lived in this old tin shack, no running water, electricity. So for the next six years, we stayed broke and kept plugging away. But we had the double edged sword as we had the, the whole country back country to ourselves. Yeah, and then uh, we ended up uh, slowly finding one discovery, and then another, and then another, and we had two kids in there. But that the, the Yukon it gets cold and dark in the winter time, but the double edged sword is there. You got lots of time to do research. So, what gold did you discover back then in the Yukon that helped you earn Prospector of the Year? Back in '96, we were literally about 800 meters from. Eventually, a, we're a deposit where we found one deposit. So that one sits at around 2 million ounces today. Wow. That's called the white, the white gold deposit. And then while we were, while they first drilled that in 2008 and nine, about 15 miles away, I had made another discovery that turned out to, well, 
depending on which ounces you use, but it's up to four and a half million ounces. And that's called the Coffee Creek Project. So it's, uh, yeah, so that kind of launched a whole pile of exploration because here's a kind of a poor prospect. You're beating the bush and still making these discoveries on surface. And that's why the Yukon was, you know, it's still a virgin country to go and look at. You're good. <laughs> well, it was, we had to come up with a different technique. So it's a lot of science. Yeah. And I learned that when I used to work for the majors when I came out of high school, like in the Timmins camp in Northern Ontario, where I originally was born and came from, there you're looking for deposits 1,000 to 1,500 feet below surface. Versus the Yukon, it's on surface. And Newfoundland, it was on surface. So that's why you have to have, uh, you have to figure out the whole plan, like how to hunt. And because I'm a hunter and trapper, really. So <laughs> Wow. You, Sean, are a decorated gold prospector. Why are you looking now for lithium? So it, it was interesting. I didn't think I would jump into it, but lithium, we thought we had enough lithium basically on the planet to, 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 like, to fill our needs with the brine deposits from Argentina and Chile. And that was about 10 years ago. But made in America with the war going on in, in Russia, people started realizing we need more local sources of metal. And so if we're all going this EV and, and batteries, there was this great big demand for lithium. Lithium, instead of a, a, a commodity, it's an industry. Like they need it for basically, like gold's up and down and copper's up and down, but lithium, because of the high demand and they needed for basically the, the batteries, it became like a more of an industry kind of metal. So the long-term need is there. But the other thing was that nobody's really gone looking for these pegmatite type of deposits. And that's kind of the unique thing. I don't know so, what that means. Can you? Yeah, so it, it, a pegmatite, it's a type of lithium deposit. They're like white quartz veins. So it's kind of like a lot like looking for gold. But these quartz veins, like 100 years ago, we used to find a visible gold in quartz veins on surface when nobody, when people just started looking for them. So lithium is the same parallel, but 100 years later, that all of a sudden they're looking for lithium. And lithium is white. Like it looks like a quartz vein. It's very silicious, so it sticks out above the ground. Mm -hmm. So actually hunting these things, it's like not that difficult if you walk the ground and you're in the right environment. But nobody's really focused on this big hunt. So, yeah, we just filtered the big Quebec database and uh, led to these bullseyes, these kind of little district areas of super high lithium that nobody's ever gone to look for. Tell me about that region and uh, your role, I guess, as the technical advisor for Eureka Lithium Corp. So the central Quebec plays that you see lots of lithium going on. Those ones are actually found in swampy type areas. And then, <clears throat> but the beauty of up there is there's hardly any swamp. There's a lot of outcrop. So visually, you could walk the ground, and there's a little bit of till on top, but it's very thin. But you could actually walk and find lots of rocks. Mm. So you were actually ahead of the game than working in the swamps of Quebec, in central Quebec. So that's, and then nobody was up there. So you had the whole playground to yourself. So the geology was, was perfect there. We actually had known pegmatites. The geochemistry was perfect there. So you're the first guy to kind of like, a, I call it high grade in the mushroom patch from the mushroom days. You're the first one in there to have a look. And you know, that's how these things are discovered. If you're the first one in, it's a like you're out on versus hunting in central Quebec and tying on, like a lot of companies will tie on to a discovery and then hope that there's a little bit of slop that falls into their claim block, you know, a little bit of, but so you could play that game or you could go and play the other game, which is look at these brand new districts. And if it, because they have such big land packages, yeah, then you have the big chunk of the pie if you make discoveries in these areas. Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, uh, Richard Branson, billionaires all have invested in an area just east yeah. of Eureka's project. Is that right? Yeah, right next, like within 10 miles. Yeah, for nickel. And that's what they were looking for. So right, there's nickel. They, right. Yeah. But it's, we're right around that same package of rocks. Yeah. So this is what's kind of going on. We have to actually, we need, like, the world is realizing that there's not an infinite supply of copper, lead, zinc, and, and now lithium. So they need that. And so that's my take is, is that uh, 
they're recognized as two for nickel. And this is why lithium is part of these nickel, you know, lithium nickel type batteries. So yeah, it's a, it's an interesting position we're in here. They've got ample funding for the yeah. 2024 exploration plans, at least. Well, and, and the thing what I did is I, when we did this big regional, because we were just ahead of the curve and like that, like the game I play is that I don't think I'm that smart. I think someone else is thinking at the same time as me or two or three, but I kind of react quick. So we secured, I, I staked a lot of ground and then optioned it to them, but they got some of the highest numbers of the entire 135,000 database, like Lake Seds. They got, I think the top three or something like, like or it's on one project. So the point is, is there's something kind of going on up there. We still got to figure it out, but it's, that's the fun part about it's like looking for Easter eggs, right? And all of a sudden, bang. All right, Sean, I think you're being a little uh, uh, humble here. I mean, you are the prospector. You've had an incredible track record. And I think you're on to something big here. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, well, that's the whole point. But I, I you know, you, you got to tell you, drill that hole. Mm -hmm. I always keep modesty in place. So <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> that's I, smart. Like, I, Right. You well, know, it, and I like, tell I tell my viewers you don't want to go all in on this stuff too. I mean, you gotta be very careful. No, no, like, it's very speculative. Yeah. But the payoff could be huge. I have the ticker well, symbol up on the screen. It's U R E K F here in the States, uh, in the over the counter market, and E R K A in Canada's exchange. So check them out. I've already put them on my watch list. And, you know, Sean, I, I might jump in on Eureka before you break ground next year for reals. I mean, when the, when the drilling yeah, yeah, well, starts, that's what right? You want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, this is the thing, like I say, and then like this lithium, like it was up to, I think it was 80,000 yeah. bucks a ton there not too long ago or whatever. That I've been watching it, yeah. So, and it's come down now. But the point is, is if we got to go this route and they do really need this lithium that bad, and they do. If they want to go green here, uh, then we got to look for this. And this is not going to slow down. It's not like, oh, okay, that wave's gone. Hmm. We we need that product. So, Well, yeah. Sean, I'm going to put all the information about Eureka Lithium Corp in the description of this video. Please, guys, check it out. It's pretty interesting. I love the backstory, Sean. I love the history and what you've done. It's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's it's fun. It has been a, a fun experience, and I, I'm lucky I have a nice, lovely wife that backs me up. So, <laughs> oh, we are blessed when we have great wives, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for joining me, Sean. I really appreciate it.